And we're back for game number two of this best of three. All right, going to be taking on Insight Esports. And Arctic right now, got to say, they're kind of the, kind of a dark horse tearing through the group stage here in the American Dota League. Of course, the top three slots, as most would expect, being dominated by the professional teams. Dignitas, Team Liquid, and Evil Geniuses. However, remaining. Arctic already managed to knock off one of those teams. They got a win against Dignitas five just the other day. And they're actually remaining. tied up with Dignitas now. They're both sitting at 4-2 and two in the standing. So Arctic, with a win here today, would actually have a chance to leapfrog them and move into third place in the standing. So uh, Arctic really performing well. And uh, a team that I knew a little bit about, I had heard the name before, uh, coming into the ADL and talking to some of the folks I've had on to Kokaz with, Beat Is and Blitz and Ten seconds. all uh, Ten all that remaining. gang of hooligans. And uh, apparently Five Arctic is, was really held in quite high regard by a number of people, including Valve and Ice Frog himself. Reserve and that time. was let slip by Blitz just the, uh, the other day, the fact that there was an internal ranking. And Arctic was just on the cusp of being invited to the Western Qualifiers. So definitely a name you want to keep an eye out for. And really, I, I, I enjoy watching Arctic play because they they remind me in a, in a big way of how Dignitas looked about this time last year. Uh, back before Dignitas became Dignitas, uh, going all the way back to the monthly Madness Qualifiers for Season 1 and, and all that. And when they were pot and bottom. And they have a lot of the same strengths and weaknesses. They have great communication. And banning the tree and protector, that's interesting. I, you know, I guess I guess I must have missed that today. A lot of tree being played or something. I mean, tree is really, really excellent remaining. at what he does. But in terms of what he gives you, Five seconds I remaining. mean, he, again, that leech seed is okay in lane. And, um, you know, you can do a lot of Reserve cool stuff time. with nature's guys. But his ulti, really kind of underwhelming for the most part. It is a bit of a deterrent against the uh, lone druid and life stealer, which is, of course, can be... Um, can be worthwhile in and of itself. Really, it's living armor. Uh, living armor just gives you so much lane survivability. You can do some really fun stuff if you get a tree and a, and a dark seer on the same team. Send the DS off to the off lane, and with the built-in survivability he has because of surge, and uh, what he can do with ion shell just to confound melee heroes trying to trying to farm or try to you know getting his own farm, his own experience. A uh, tree can really work out well there as well. But uh, just odd. Saw the tree first picked coming into uh, our first game of the evening. Inside versus Liquid, and now seeing it banned out in the first phase. Inside going to grab themselves a Shadow Demon. I have zero qualms with that. Shadow Demon is a high enough value hero that I have no problem with someone first picking him. I think he is consistently and remains the most underrated support in the entire game. Not by the professional community, but by viewership for the most part. The hero just counters everyone in one way, shape, form, or another. And it's just an absolute terror to deal with. Works well in an offensive or defensive tri lane, and uh, can just contribute so very much to your team. And you know, honestly, it's one of those abilities that doesn't get as much attention as it should. Whenever you're talking those crazy games where uh, it'll be like eight to eight in like a six minute game remaining. or something like that, in uh, early team fights and early being, you know, Five say the first fifteen remaining. minutes, twenty minutes of a game. If you have that kind of a game, Shadow Demon Shadow Poison is nothing to sleep on, man. That is nothing Radiant to take lightly. Team. It does considerable damage. It can really make a difference to a Shadow Demon's team if he's on point with it. So Arctic going to snag themselves the Darkseer. Love the synergy between these two heroes. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. I, I can't imagine for one moment why a, a, a tree and protector would be of higher value than a gyro. And granted, it was Arctic that banned the tree. So maybe it's just a, another team that really puts a high emphasis on him. But, you know, letting like a Shadow Demon go even. I'd rather ban a Shadow Demon than a tree and protector in most cases. Ten um, because, you know, Tree, again, he's kind of gimmicky. He does some really useful stuff, and you can do some cool stuff Five with him. Seconds but he's remaining. also not particularly hard to deal with, at least for the most part. But anyway, Insight with an interesting mix. Shadow Demon and Enchantress could be the beginning of an offensive tri lane. Don't know that it will be. And, you know, really, I, casters continue, myself included, to talk like that. I mean, once in a very blue moon, you'll see an Enchantress or a Chen run as an offensive jungler. And really going all the way back to the downtime between the International 1 and the International 2, that's when you saw the heyday of that. You, Chin and Enchantress were both first pick, first bans. And uh, Chin was just known as the defensive jungler, and Enchantress was known as the offensive jungler. It's just the way people played. If you picked an Enchantress, you almost always tried to run an offensive tri lane, just yeah, using her bang. in the enemy jungle and then trying to apply pressure that way. But, um, you know, it still happens once in a while. Liquid's a team that'll do that sometimes. Uh, Fluff really still enjoys the Enchantress pick. 
But for the most part, you can bank on Enchantress as being defensive as well. And touched on this a bit in game one, the fact that teams as a whole, I mean, just entire teams as a whole in the seconds. West are beginning remaining. to play much more defensive. We're just not seeing that much offensive pressure put on it. Five seconds and, remaining. Um, does make for some rather quiet early games. Saw that in our D2L cast for the most part, and then we saw Reserve it in game time. one of this uh, of this ADL broadcast as well. But that game got <laughs> caught out of hand in a hurry. You can ask insight about that. Looking at the bands, Radiant moving through the second band phase, DK and Weaver taken out by Arctic, recognizing. And, you know, DK, I again, I think is a hero who's going to get so much more play because people have just realized how hard he is to deal with if he gets a good amount of levels, if he's quick to max out both Breathe Fire and, uh, and Dragon's remaining. Blood. The sheer amount of armor he has, plus 12, is five just immense. I mean, truly seconds, immense. Level remaining. 9, he can have plus 12 armor with an ulti, Reserve with maxed time. out Breathe Fire which is just a true nuke. I mean, I remember looking back in the day, I want to say it was a Darer that used to do it. They would run these very crazy lineups where they would have like a, a um, they would have a Windrunner in the off lane. They'd stick the DK in the defensive tri lane. Then they would put a, a Death Prophet in mid. And what they would do is try to hit a timing where they'd all hook up in mid. Like the whole team would just collapse on mid. Crip Swarm maxed out, Breathe Fire maxed out, Power Shot maxed out at that stage of the game is just silly. And you can build entire lineups around that concept for DK if you want. And I'm not saying it's optimal, but you can. And, uh, you know, he, and just because of how effective he is against any hero that wants to do right-click damage or wants to fight in the mid-game, I mean, even against push lineups, he does very well. And he pushes well as well. He pushes very extremely potently. <clears throat> Because of the way his level 1 dragon dragon form works, and now his level 2 since it's a buff in 6.78. The Nyx Assassin picked up to go with Arctic's very strong lineup already. Insight picks up the Rattle Trap. Rattle Trap, the Clockwork Goblin. One of my favorite heroes to cast and watch. Really a playmaker and a difference maker in terms of uh, his capabilities. And excellent at shutting down heroes like the Gyrocopter. Five Mostly five you'll see him used against remaining. Druids and Lifestealers. We do see the Lifestealer ban this time. The Druid is still available if either team wants to snag him. And Arctic could honestly, uh, if they wanted to run the Darkseer mid, they could honestly put together, um, hell, just send the, uh, I, uh, well, I'm not going to go into that. I mean, at this point, it's so early on that they have a lot of versatility. Gyro can go mid, Darkseer can go mid, uh, Darkseer can jungle, he can offlane, so on and so forth, so their fourth pickup will give us a better idea of what direction they want to head. Insight, just kind of wide open, really. I mean, you figure they've got two of their their two of their three heroes in the defensive trial lane. They'll be looking to grab some kind of a carry. Uh, Luna stands out as one that might be a decent pickup. Very often you'll see Luna pick to counter the gyro. PA, as Insight was going for in game one, could also work. Um she just has to have very good farm, and you can't lose every lane, which is basically what happened. Well, they lost two of the three, and things just got out of hand in a hurry. But, you know, a, a pocket strategy that I'd like to see a lot more of, um, I, I can't remember who it was. It may have been Menix in this tournament ran it, and I think it had a ton of potential. The execution was there. It's just the secondary and tertiary objectives. Remaining were not accomplished. They were getting a lot of kills and not a lot of towers. Five they were getting a lot of kills remaining. and not a lot of gold. They were getting a lot of kills and not a lot of map control. But I like the idea of a TAPA combination, the two assassin combination. Run the TA out of mid, put the PA on farm, Let and just basically take your time with it. Try to keep the laning phase intact as long Please. as you can if it's favorable to you. Farm up a blink Five dagger and whatever else you want to get on your TA. And then as soon as your PA hits that nice core, which I talked about in game one, uh, get a BKB after your drums and your phase boots. And by then, if you're level 11, just hook the TA and the PA up. And with remaining. the TA having a blink dagger, side trap, what have you, those two can just jump Five a target seconds. and blow them up. Five. One meld from TA, one good crit from PA. That'll Three blow up almost any target uh, in the mid game. And has a lot of mobility, so you can run it however you want. You can run a gank oriented. You could run it even with a push lineup if you want to. And just take fights behind the enemy tower. And it's a really fun strategy to watch. And one that I think uh, can Ten get some seconds. more play. Ten seconds Insight, remaining. though, opting to show us a clinks as they fourth pick that. We Five will see the TA remaining. banned out by Arctic with their last band. Still waiting on the last band from Insight. Arctic gets their hands on an AA. 
Ancient yeah. Apparition, of course, benefiting from the latest patch, Dial him and his scepter right. upgrade. And don't know that we'll see that. Um, takes a lot of coal to get a scepter up on an AA. AA is just an excellent hero. And, uh, the AA pick does make sense for a number of reasons. I mean, not just the AOE. But when you look at the lineup that Insight's already showing us, these are not Naga. super survivable heroes. So now they're going to go and grab the Naga. Radiant and, pick. yeah, I think that might be a mid-Naga again. Like, why, why? if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And mid-Naga is beginning to really show its strength. But with Insight, they've got Enchantress, who's going to want to heal with Nature's Attendance, and AA's ulti, whether it hits you itself or if the orb just passes through you, prevents healing effects on any targets that are chilled. And that's a nice answer to that. And when you look at Insight's remaining. entire lineup, outside of the Clockwork, who's fairly survivable, with Clink's Enchanter Five Shadow Demon, remaining. they can hit with an AA ult. It's not going to take a lot of damage to get them down to the kill threshold. Resolve so they're time. really going to have to be watching out. Now, Clink's, I mean, when you look at how they're going to lane this, it could be a mid-Clockwork or a mid-Clink's. It really could. Uh, they could do something nutty with the Clink's and defensive tri lane him, something like that. Don't know that they will. They honestly could try an offensive trial lane with the Enchantress Clock and Shadow Demon. Uh, against what Arctic's already showing them, I wouldn't do it. Ancient Apparition is excellent with a Nyx Assassin, with a Gyrocopter getting kills in that situation. Cold Feet, before Impale, even, even level 1 Impale, as crappy as it is with a 1 second stun, that's often enough to help you get off Cold Feet. Ten seconds remaining. Slark. And okay, there's going to be a Slark. So I'll, I'll tell you what, if there's anything I can say about Insight that I enjoy, they're not showing me stuff that I see every day. You know, seeing, this is just a weird lineup. Very weird lineup. This is a lineup that's either going to dominate or get crushed. It's not, there's going to be no mid-ground. There's gonna, not going to be a 40-minute, oh, it was close and one fight changed the game. That's not how this is going to go at all. Um, this is going to be Insight starts ganking, Clinks gets an early Orchid, and they just dominate Arctic or... Arctic doesn't get ganked. They manage to survive. They start taking team fights, and they just dominate and win in 25 minutes. It's going to be one of the two. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, in fact, it's exciting to see heroes. Like, you know, in Slark, again, Liquid has put that hero through its paces. I think the way that Liquid plays Slark is probably the only real future, at least in his current iteration, that he's going to have as a uh, here in professional Dodo. Just because, I mean, it's what you call the anti-mage effect, basically. Like, yes, you can farm him. Yes, he can gank really well. And wow, my mouse pointer is invisible. Okay, that's not fun. Hoping. Here, come on, mouse pointer. All right. Sorry, guys. There, hopefully that'll be back. I'm going to have to pause. Bugged. All right. One minute. All right, sorry about that. Obviously, as a caster, I'm not going to be able to cast with my mouse pointer bugged. So I'm going to mute the mic and pop the music up. I'll be right back in just a minute. All right, sorry about that, guys. And here we go. As long as I got my mouse pointer, that's all I, all I really care about. But anyway, taking a look at how they're going to end up landing this. Actually, I'll just run through the lineups and we'll figure it out from there. We're going to have Plock and Lingar Enchantress. He's currently probably not running mid, but making his way through there. We're going to have Arjunath running on the Shadow Demon. Clink's going to be handled by Violence, looking to live up to his namesake. Slark going to be played by Cold. Would imagine this will be a mid-Slark a la Team Liquid's approach. SS going to be handling the Clockwork Goblin. He'll be setting up shop in the offlane. On the other side of the river, we're going to have Misko playing on the Nyx Assassin, making his way through the river. Smash will be indeed running on Nagasaira mid again for the second game in a row. Masuku going to be handling our Ancient Apparition, Mihawk on the Darkseer, and Gyrocopter going to be played by Ewo. So we will wait a bit to see how they're going to end up doing this with the Clockwork in the offlane. But there are two two supports here, and they may actually just do this. And I I mentioned this during the, uh, see, Nyx Assassin's making his way up. And, yeah, they are going to go ahead and just leave Mihawk to his own devices. And Clink's <laughs> fearing the gank, hanging out for a bit as well. Smash going to be up. Now, this is going to be a hard life for Cold. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be rough going, man. Is it he has two armor, on? and that is what is reduced by level one Riptide. Smash should have a bottle up quickly, much quicker than Slark. And, yeah, this is going to be a hard life for a melee hero trying to deal with that 
with the Riptide spam. They are going to offensively try lane this, and I actually did mention this. That they had the option to run the Enchantress. I mean, you know, the Enchantress offensively jungling is not the surprise. It's, you know, the clockwork who's at the head and is the farmer of the offensive try lane. I've seen it done a few times, uh, or variations thereof. One team that does it once in a while is a rattles is Rattlesnake, who qualified in as a wild card out of the Eastern t the International Qualifiers. And it can be very effective, but it has very little margin for error. One bad reaction, one bad decision, one, one death given up, and it can get out of control. Especially against a lineup like this. And Ewo has yet to place a point. Waiting to see if he's going to need homing missile, one would imagine. Block's going to have his own way here. But uh, here in mid, yeah, this is a game which I'm watching. It's going to be the, the uh, leap onto Smash, not accomplishing a lot. And they're playing this very carefully. And, you know, this is kind of the, the, the double-edged sword of playing this kind of lineup. You want to be aggressive, otherwise you wouldn't run into, you know, you wouldn't run an aggressive try lane. But at the same time, you don't want to just take unnecessary damage. You don't want to take the risk of, you know, not seeing someone who's moving in your direction, just making a, a small mental or mechanical error and feeding a death. And you'd have to hit that fine balance. And right now, SS and Archerath are going to be getting some good experience. The Enchantress and Cold run out of lane. And he will have a bottle soon that'll help using his last salve. And a little bit of harassment <laughs> out of the Seder Mind Stealer does come and burn mana. That can be Radiant's very annoying. Bottom tower is under attack. But, again, this tri lane is really where my interest is at. Level 2 First on both ends, of course. Clinks would somehow manage First to... How does the Clinks manage to kill off of Darkseer? That just shouldn't happen, really. Nonetheless, Radiant's nice play by Mihawk. Or, excuse me, by attack. violence. Poor play by Mihawk. Love you, Mihawk. Bad play. Shouldn't be dying to a Clinks if you're Darkseer. Shouldn't happen. We are going to have a brief pause, and <laughs> yeah, it looks like violence. Yep, that would explain it. That's unfortunate. But um, anyway, while we do have a moment, I want to thank each and every one of you for making us a part of your broadcast day. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, no matter what corner of the world you happen to call home. Thank you for supporting the American Dota League. If you're enjoying what you're hearing and what you're seeing, make sure you hit follow here on twitch.tv slash American Dota League, and you can follow me on Twitter as well. I'm at AC at A-Y-E-S-E-E. -E -E. I cover the D2L as well, probably where many of you know me from primarily, but so happy to be getting to know the, the awesome members of the South American scene and getting to know the teams and the players. I really am so happy to be here every day I do the ADL, and you guys are really making this season a success. Make sure you tell your friends. Um, you know, no corporate sponsorship for the ADL right now. This is all just a test run from a guy who has a dream and really wants to be a part of the scene and wants to get into esports. Uh, really great guy. And if you can support by buying a ticket, that's great. If you just support with viewership, that's that's fine too. So thanks to all of you, whether you're listening in game or you're listening via Twitch TV. One to nothing. Inside benefiting from the Dark Seer giving up the first blood certainly. Violence, not going to have too much of a problem with that extra little bit of gold. Gyrocopter, not farming the best thing at 17. The Darkseer is at 22. And 20 for Slark in mid. 20 for Slark in mid is actually a little bit surprising. Uh, more than a little bit surprising, in fact. The Naga should have been doing a bit more of an effective job. And Cold, with his bottle up, certainly has a bit of help now. He, ha he is maxing Dark Pact, which... It's pretty typical. Very, very powerful nuke early on in the game. Gives you a ton of gank potential in conjunction with leap. And that's going to be my question, really. I mean, when you look at Insight's lineup, this is not a lineup that wants to go late. This is not a lineup that's built to, to, to go to 50, 60 minutes against a gyrocopter in August. Get out of here. So they're going to want to break down this laning phase at some point. And how they go about it and when they go about it are the two big questions. Um... They have a fairly mobile lineup. With the Enchantress, she tends to, to get around pretty well. Clinks with Skeleton Walk, of course, does as well. But what I think they're the problem they're going to run into is that Arctic is probably just going to try to stabilize, try not to give up much until Gyro gets one or two big items. And 
looks like a, against the team he's up against. It's the same build that I would talked about a lot with Liquid. Opting to go something like FaZe, Aquila, Helm of the Dominator, just for the bonus armor. And of course, lifesteal, and you can use a creep to stack camps, and that's all well and good. I mean, that's, that's certainly useful. But it's mostly just how cost-efficient it is to get your armor up and really look at the damage that Insight has. Pure damage from the impetus of Enchantress. That's, you know, that's something that can't really be avoided, but that's still physical mixed with pure damage. Clinks, physical damage. Slark, physical damage. And take truth, I don't know. Battery assault is magical. I couldn't remember if it was magical or composite. I knew it. I knew it was. I didn't know it was magical. I just didn't know if it was composite mag magical or not. But um. Anyway, most of the damage they have out of their two carry slash semi carry slash gankers and the clinks and the slark, it'll be mitigated quite well by a gyro now. And the other problem they kind of face here. And the Slark in particular is probably going to be the one who finds this out in a very bad way. Slark is a hero that's predicated on the idea of using Leap, jumping on someone, and then just pounding away. But that's not a situation in which Gyro really minds. You jump on him, you're isolated, you're a perfect target for full damage Rocket Barrage. Call down's going to be there to make sure you can't escape. And while he's attacking you, any of your teammates within a thousand radius is, are going to be taking damage as well because of Flak Cannon. So Slark, most likely not going to be the one super focused firing the gyro, especially once detection uh, comes out on mass, being a gem, just being a lot of sentry wards or what have you. So that leaves Clinks, and Clinks with Strafe does have the chance to put some distance between himself. More than likely, the way they're going to want to try to focus fire this. Wow, look at that. So much damage being taken by Plock just from Ion Shell. They're probably going to want to put Plock and Clinks on gyro duty. And then tell Slark to focus fire down high priority targets like Naga Siren or Darkseer, if I had to guess. The Darkseer very likely to be the builder of the mech. He's actually picked up the Soul Ring already. And we'll see if the mechanism will be next. Smash coming over under cover of an Invis rune. And let's see. He's got an ensnare. And it's going to burn him down some. And there's the ensnare. Beautifully timed. Could not have done it better. Simply could not have done it better. Baited it out. Clink's got a little greedy. Thought he'd be cute. And situation like that, yeah, you know, if you're a Clink's, you gotta wonder a little bit. Too, too many faces off the map. Not enough visibility. Eight minutes in. We're back to one-to-one. -to -one. Arctic gets themselves on the board. Slark is farming like all hell. And that's a credit to Cold. Smash. Just not zoning him out as much as I thought he would. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Tier 1 tower and bottom does end up dropping. Our giraffe kind of kicking it, kind of hanging for the moment. Flock over in the jungle could wind up a target if Mihawk wanders over. It doesn't look like he will. And yep. Iwo not even going to worry about the Aquila. Or pull up. Instead, just going to take the Bassy, bonus armor from that, Dyer's no problem. And go straight up Helm of the Dom. After that, I would imagine a BKB. Although he could go Shadow Blade, honestly. He's going to feel survivable enough without having to have that BKB. And we see Cold miss was with the leap. Mihawk will make it away because of that. The mech, only about 600 gold away right now for this Darkseer. Or Mihawk. Boom, there it goes. But another quiet early game. Very, very quiet. Not a single tower down until that bottom tier one drop. Very little pushing, actually. And Smash being pursued by Cold. And not going to chase it out. There's a ensnare that he's able to use his ult to get out of. Dark packs as well. In the meantime, Arctic looking to make something happen at top. top tower SS. Is under I mean, a homing missile. Not the end of the world. Honk. Smash, very likely Radiant's going for a straight up defusal. Could go Yashimanta if he really wants to. For the most part, you want to see a defusal. If you're going to rush any agility item like that, defusal is usually going to be the one. And already has picked up one blade of alacrity. Will be Yasha, as he has the band of elven skin as well. Again, very close to that macro. Now 500 
looking at Arctic's line, if they get that mech up, I honestly think they just need to push. And Cole trying to make something happen up here. We'll go ahead and Dark Pack doing some good damage to Ewo. Ewo is just going to TP away. Masuku staying safe as well. And bottom looks like we're going to have an engagement. They do get the tower. There's Smash throwing out the ensnare. Good impale from behind. Cleans things up. Naga Siren takes the kill. Man. And wow, that is a brave Clinks. Skeleton walking about a quarter time. Looks like they want to reinitiate. And here they come. There's the leash man just to catch Mihawk. Mihawk going to be bursted down. Misko actually spins the impale. We'll see if they can clean it up. He can. Getting one kill. Shadow Demon going to make a run for it. Vendetta on Misko. Smash coming back as well. The Vendetta, all they need. That's a double kill for the Nyx Assassin. And that's the absolute last hero you want to be given double kills to. When a Nyx starts out in a very support heavy position and is able to just get some free kills due to bad decision making, and Smash is going to make a good decision there. Use Song of the Siren to guarantee. Oh, Misko caught by a good hook. And the follow up beautifully done there. Waiting patiently. And Smash, trying to be a good guy, ends up setting up a perfect hook, basically. Four to three. Very nice play there. And that's, you know, probably something worth mentioning. We're going to call these two the Thunderdome Kids. Because the Thunderdome Kids can make the Thunderdome. They can, it's a portable Thunderdome. They tour around like the crappy carnivals that used to come to your home city when you were a kid. And, or you kissed that really ugly girl. Because in the carnival light, she looked like she might someday grow up to be attractive. Maybe that was just... But, uh... <laughs> three to four. Arctic has a slight lead on the scoreboard. The Thunderdome kids showing off their synergy there. Being able to cog one in and hold followed up. AA ulti going to connect. That's going to hit cold. And yeah, he's going to be forced to ulti. Try to ulti away. Masuko rotating over. Potential to... Nope, never mind. It's Clink's. Clink's actually really close to his orchid. 500 gold, give or take. 550. And that's when Insight's going to sink or swim. Right now, they're getting a little bit of work done, but they are behind in kills, and they picked a lineup that doesn't need and doesn't really can't really afford to be behind in kills. They have no late-game potential. I mean, Clinks, when he gets out of control, I guess, can carry the late-game, kind of. But Clinks is the kind of hero who you want to put him behind, behind a big target. You want to put him, you know, on a team with a lone druid, gyrocopter, PA, TA, even. Heroes that tend to play some pretty chest-out Dota, tend to get focus fired and survive it and clinks can just sneak up in the back of the fight come in at a funny angle he works really well with uh, alchemist actually that's uh, something i've been meaning to say for a while clinks alchemist every time i've seen it has actually been really effective um clinks benefits from the armor reduction of acid spray among other things i mean it's just it's a really good combination but yeah that's what he wants a big tanky behemoth to soak damage and, and grab attention while he sneaks up on folks and Misko <laughs> has his Sentry Ward dewarded. A ulti. Actually, okay, shot it to there. Oh, they're shooting it in, into the lane. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. At any rate, Plinks heading down that way. He's got a centaur with him. Gonna try to do a little solo push. Arctic doing what they should Radiance be doing here. Choke out the jungle. Attack. Choke this team to death. Their gankers make them come and fight you whenever your group dies. And that's a very bad Shadow Demon. What, the, what level is Shadow Demon? Level 5? Yeah, he's definitely having a hard time. 14 minutes, don't have Demonic Purge. Not the best. And the Enchantress? Struggling as well. And this is not really something they can afford equally. Enchantress, she can give you some nice single target DPS at most stages of the game. But so very often, lineups that draft an Enchantress, they want to get a lot out of her within the first 10 minutes. They really do. When she starts moving around, when she starts putting pressure on mid, when she starts trying to just be that X factor that no one can account for. Tends to free the map up for heroes, as an example, like Slark and like Clinks. But so far, Arctic is honestly just moving so much better than Insight. And Insight's lineup itself doesn't bother me. It is very all-in. Um, I wouldn't call it clowning or anything. But it is, it is what it is. It's a, it's a super ganker lineup. And the problem when you draft that is you find yourself in 15 minutes down in kills. And there's just no option. There's no, well, let's fall back and farm. Because Naga Siren would love 
to fall back and farm against a Clinkson Slark. Gyrocopter would love to fall back and farm a Clinks and a Slark. Smash, gonna be cogged in, and here we go, Thunderdome kids. There's a vacuum, though. AA ulti passes through. And they're gonna catch all of them. Smash gonna get off one last Riptide. They do manage to kill her off. In the meantime, the battle rages on. Misko in trouble using Kira Pace. Gonna be cleaned up nonetheless. Rocket Flare getting the job done. Nice step forward here. From inside. This is the kind of stuff they have to be willing to do. Take fights in awkward positions and make them work. These two working together very, very well. There's the Orchid done for Clinks. Again, it's live or die time. This is when... By the way, I just want to point this out. If you're a StarCraft player, every time AA uses his buff, tell me that doesn't look like on Darkseer. He doesn't look like he's a Protoss. Tell me it doesn't. Tell me he does not look like a little under undersized zealot with the things on his back and the side blades on his hands. Looks so like a Protoss. If you don't play StarCraft, you won't get it, but it was an awesome reference. Cold going to be building his BKB. As his Oak Club up, Mithril Hammer on the way. Enchantress broke as the joke. Shadow Demon, not much different. Clinks, though, again with that Orchid. This is where he's going to want to be high value. And this is where he can really shine. This is going to be. And I said it during the draft. Hang on. Nice hook onto his own teammate. And they're going to get at least one kill. In the meantime, the Cogs, very nice vacuum, though. Using their own Cogs against them. They're going to be able to clean this up. Might cost them an AA. Cold will be stunned under cover of his ulti. It's going to wear off. There's an ensnare, so they end up getting two, but it's going to cost them at least three. Slark hustling and bustling away. Going to cost them a tower as well. Really good vacuum from Mihawk, and that's such a good way to turn a fight around on the clockwork. You can use them against your own teammates very effectively. Seven to eight. Arctic retakes the lead. I really like the way Insight's playing them. They're trying to make plays happen. That was a really nice hook here, whether intentional or not. I think it was intentional. He shot it a bit too wide for it not to have been intentional. But what it ended up doing was connecting with his invisible teammate. Then he just immediately dropped the cogs and got the target that his invisible teammate was standing next to. Just really well played. And if you're going to draft a lineup like this, you got you to gotta, you gotta go for it. It's not a, well, let's see what they give us kind of a lineup. No. You, you play like that, Arctic will eventually figure out, and they already have, if they can just run as five or run as four while Gyro stacks as Ancients and kills Ancients all day. And they'll turtle for 20 minutes and then just show up and just beat you every which way from Sunday. So making things happen. Being proactive. And trying to get kills and trying to shut Arctic down to make them feel uncomfortable. Necessary and so far, for the most part, being accomplished. They're still trailing. Pretty badly, actually. Still trailing to Arctic by about 7,500 gold at 17 minutes in. So they got a long way to go. And to be perfectly honest, the, the ship may have already sailed. There's going to be a disruption. AA ulti will connect. I caught a couple. Sentry goes down. Misko bends the wrong way. Went right instead of left. Probably for the best. Sentry was down. If he had gone left, he probably would have run right over top of it and died. But, um... To be completely honest, Insight may have already missed the boat on that lineup. I mean, unless... Clinks can just go ape here shortly. He is going to be impaled. I mean, and by ape, I mean he needs to start notching kills today. Right this second. He's 3-3. Three and three, Few too many deaths. Slark's done well. Cold playing. Much better than I thought he... Well, not so much than I thought he would, but than I thought he would be able to, given what he was up against, especially in the lane. But, able to get a good start going. His net worth up near the top. Still being kind of busted up by Iwo from Arctic. And, again, just the conundrum that faces them. They're not going to outfarm this team and win. Probably just not likely to happen. So what do you do? You haven't done all that much work as of now. You've only got two tier ones now. You have already lost two of your own tier ones, so you're even on towers. Map control's neutral. You have to, to press here. You have to feel some sense of urgency. And if they do, they do have firepower. I mean, 7,500 eight, at 18 is, is really quite high. But against the team like Inside has that is predicated on snowballing anyway, it almost doesn't matter. 
you know, the experience is probably more disconcerting if I'm in inside shoes than the gold even is. But with the Orchid out, they're just going to have to do it right now. They need to kill Ewo a few times. They need to split push. They have great split push capability. Five on five fights are not going to be their forte. Using the hook from clock to initiate into fights where it's three on two, two on two, that's going to be what they want. Sorry once again for the pause. Hope you guys are enjoying yourself. If you are enjoying what you're hearing, make sure you hit follow. You're on twitch.tv slash American Dota League. We have one more best of one broadcast following this game. And then we'll be done for tonight. Coming back tomorrow, we'll be upping it just a bit. Getting underway with 4-5. I can't remember. I have to check. Then on Saturday, big, big day for the ADL. We're going to have eight. That's right. Count them. Eight. Eight hours of ADL action with eight best of ones. We hope for no delay. Otherwise, I will be in the studio all day long, which is awesome. Most for the most part, but not on the same. Nonetheless, really want you guys to join us. Not just tomorrow, but all throughout the future as well. So hit follow here on twitch.tv slash American Dota League. You can find the American Dota League on Twitter as well, at American Dota. And while you're at it, why don't you look me up soon? I'm AC. Nice to meet you. You can find me on Twitter, at EC, at E-Y-E-S-E-E. -E -E. And on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash ACTV. D2L will be taking a day off tomorrow. I get to sleep in. Hooray. But again, my afternoon quite packed. Quite, 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 quite packed. And not sure what the problem happens. Today. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it under control momentarily. Tell you what, while we wait, I'm going to go ahead and pot the tunes up for oh, his FPS drops. Huh. Oh, okay, never mind. I will not pot it back up. We will. Resume the game. 15 kills on the board in an 18 and a half minute game. There's a homing missile. It's going to be chasing a little Slarky. That's cold retreats. Down here on bottom, we can see Clinks laying into Misko. And the skeleton walk after him. There's the ping. Sentry goes down. A ulti's there. And beautiful. Absolutely beautifully shot. Beautifully executed. And off of that, they're going to be able to take a Roshan. That could not have gone better. Misko baited that perfectly. A true master of baiting. Kappa. Dropping the sentry. Didn't even really need it. He probably could have blind shot it. And made that work. Roshan. Drops to Arctic. And now with that Aegis up, level 14. He's already got an MKB, by the way. That, that actually it just kind of blows my mind. I knew he was going pretty hard and heavy. He was farming up. Already picked up an MKB. Yash out on Smash. Four staff and mech out on the Dark Seer. Block doing his thing. Kaboom. A ulti. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. They will get a tier one out of this. Thing. And sorry, guys. No A ulti with Scepter. At least it doesn't look that way. I, I'll actually be really surprised if Insight's able to hold here. Because if I'm in Arctic shoes, I'm pushing through this tier two straight to the racks. There's no reason not to. Everyone's farmed. You've got an urn and arc boots up on Misko. You've got Masuko even feeling a little tanky with a bracer, magic wand. Iwo with an MKB, meaning he can sit on the steps if he wants to. And Dyer's top tower is yeah, I, I, I'm really interested to see how they're going to try to defend this. Naga Siren with a Manta and a double damage room. They're going to pop the glyph. They're going to have to do this just right. Arctic needs to spread out a bit. There's a hook. Going to get two at least. They get two. Oh, and actually one ends up out, but the counter initiation there and in a big way. Cold comes in. Mech's there to erase the damage using the ulti to get away from the ensnare, which would have gone through the BKB normally. Naga Siren using her Siren Song, cutting two off. The Aegis actually did get cracked as Cold manages to get it, but in the end, it's going to cost them pretty much everything. Ensnare is there. Plock is dead. And Arctic, again, no reason not to shove all the way through. I suspect the end of the game may be upon us. 10,000 experience. Coming up on 10,000 gold. Gold oh, going to leap. Using the Dark Pact. Tower's already down to half health. And there you go. 
Nice deny attempt out of the plates. The AL team tossed out. And very nice impale. They're going to follow this up. Call down's right on the money. Clink's going to try to tank through it. They're going to get some damage done. Buyback from Slark right off the bat. And Darkseer with a great wall. And here comes Slark once again just to try and make this work. Running right by a sentry in snare. Gets him right in range. That'll be that. He just bought back anyway. And now down for 55 seconds. Really the only member of Insight that feels like they can do damage. The Clinks got his Orchid up. It just wasn't the fastest Orchid. He didn't really do a lot with it. He didn't really get ahead in levels. And yeah. I mean, he's the same level as the Nyx Assassin and the AA. You can't have that. If you're going to roll with the Clinks, you got to make sure that you're out and active and not just doing damage, but getting kills. You need to get ahead in levels. And they're actually going to continue this. A little surprising. I would have thought they would have called the GG. But hey, playing in a pro game, making a pro effort, right? Suko picking up the four staff. Arctic, really, again. I don't know why they wouldn't just hook up and push. Ghost Scepter adding to the Darkseer's already copious amount of survivability. With the four staff, the mech. And now... Physical damage immunity. Smash will be getting his defusal when Manta first, as mentioned. We saw him grab the Yasha. Now with the defusal, Iwo still hitting hard as a truck. 222, the amount of damage he's doing. He's got 5,000 gold in the bank. 5,000. It's about to get bigger. If he just stacked the Ancients again, he's going to go make the Ancients pay. Kills him in about eight shots. Got spotted out doing it. Does not care. Wave at the camera there, you are. And Manta style just flat out bought. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Let's buy a Manta. And again, not feeling the need for the BKB. And I really understand that against Insight. Why would you? Um, and, and given the position you're in, just get the Manta. You're going to feel more potent. You're going to be able to have the attack speed. Attack speed. Insnare, spin on block. Block going to be disrupted. Buys a little bit of time. AA ulti's there. Beautifully timed with the impale. And going to force them back with the AA ulti. You are most likely going to start to save up for the Satanic. Radiance Tier 2 mid drops. And yeah. Yuo doesn't have to be that close. It's seriously get as far away as his max attack range will get. Not that it really matters. He's attacking so hard and so fast. 250-ish damage. And the hook actually splits the wickets. That's unfortunate. Naga Siren going to blow the ulti. They're going to set up shop, get ready to drop the hammer. Yeah. Hammer equals drop. They did kind of screw up on the vacuum there, and they may end up... Nah, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say they may end up taking a bit of, a bit more damage. And the vacuum, a little mistimed, a little bit of lax communication. There's the kill. Flock being forced all the way back. Gyro doesn't care. Getting a kill. With flat cannon. And the GG comes out. So Insight, their second game in a row, ends up dropping again. Struggling here in the early group stages of the American Dota League. Arctic, though, actually moves ahead of Team Dignitas, who, with whom they were tied and whom they beat just a couple of days ago. Excellent showing out of them. And a team that I think is really should be on everyone's radar. They're definitely on mine now. Again, a team that reminds me a lot of Dignitas before they were Dignitas. Reminds me a lot of Pot of Bottom and has a ton of potential. Really like the way they play, really like the way they draft, and really like the way they win. 25 minutes, one second, all the time it took. 8 to 20. The final kill score is Arctic more than doubles up their opponents in Insight. And Insight drops yet another game now hanging out in the cellar of the american dota league they are at 0 and 0 and 6 actually below pain international who's sitting at 0 and 5. still a lot of dota to be played here though at the adl not necessarily tonight only one game remaining here tonight but it's gonna be a good one definitely gonna be worth your while as arctic takes on team liquid looks to slay another dragon and looks to improve their record i'm your ac chambers make sure you hit follow here on twitch.tv slash American Dota League and follow me on Twitter and Twitch as well. On Twitter, it's at AC. 
at A E Y E S E E and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash A C T V. Again, we're about 20 minutes out from our next match. That'll be Team Liquid taking on Arctic Gaming. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. 